Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar Wednesday presentation introducing MicroDrones, the multi-rotor UAS solution. Today's broadcast is brought to you by NEI, your surveying, construction, mapping, and GIS marine dealer. We've got your back every step of the way. Today's broadcast is presented by myself, Chad Hicks. I'm with NEI, the Imaging Solutions team lead. I'm also joined by Chuck Dorgan with MicroDrones, the sales director for the United States. Our moderator today will be Angie Swirsky, also with NEI, our MGI sales manager. The agenda for today will include first a brief overview of imaging solutions, followed by the MicroDrones presentation, the aircraft, their capabilities, the packages, some success stories, and what's next on the horizon with MicroDrones followed by a short coverage of photogrammetry, the applications, and a look at the software workflow, a brief demonstration. To end with a question and answer period, for those of you new to GoToWebinar, the screenshot on your screen now shows the question and answer box at the bottom of the GoToWebinar control panel. Please feel free at any time on any of the content to go ahead and enter your question and we'll answer those at the end of the broadcast. So, what are imaging solutions? With NEI, our imaging portfolio consists of a broad range of products, including indoor, airborne, land mobile, and what we're going to talk about today, unmanned aircraft solutions, specifically microdrones. Our indoor solution is affectionately known as TIMS, the Trimble Indoor Mobile Mapping System, consisting of a ferro scanner, a Planex IMU and imaging system. The LAN mobile products are the MX2 and MX7 utilizing the Trident and Trimble MX software. And of course today's featured presentation the unmanned aircraft systems or more commonly known as UAS specifically microdrones. MD mapper packages combine industry leading UAVs with payloads that were specifically designed for industrial applications like surveying, mapping, inspection, construction, mining, volumetrics, and precision, precision agriculture. These packages and kits provide complete solutions that include aircraft, sensors, accessories, custom mounts, and even an Android tablet app that makes it easy to plan, monitor, adjust, and analyze your missions anywhere. So, our first poll question today. Angie, I'll flip it over to you. All right, looking at the results, it looks like there's a fair amount of the attendees using multi-rotor and a lot are using none and hopefully looking for a solution. All right, thanks Angie. And so now we'll pass it over to Chuck who's going to talk about microdrones. Thank you, Chad. Appreciate it. Thank you, Angie. Can you guys hear me okay? Absolutely. All right. So uh, as Angie and Chad had mentioned, I work for Micro Jones, the sales director for the United States. And uh, I'm going to give a brief, a brief uh, discussion about uh, first starting off with our airframes. As you can see, there's three of them. Uh, and then after I speak about the airframes, I'll get into the actual packages, which is the, the most important piece of the, of the conversation. So our, our Micro Jones, um, for those who don't know, are engineered and manufactured in Germany. Um, we have a an office in Montreal that does the system integration uh, that puts the you know integrates the payloads to the drone puts together the software um, they do a lot of the, the stuff to make it an actual using uh, useful package and then I have an office outside of Syracuse New York with uh, folks from engineering and marketing there so what does German engineering really mean our drones uh, were industry leading flight times uh, incredible resistance to harsh conditions and smart integration maximize your productivity. 
our our uh, airframe is rain and heat resistant. The Micro Jones molding process keeps electronics and wiring protected from elements. Our system is resistant to rain, sand, and salt, so you can fly in harsh conditions. We also have quality and integrated motors for minimum downtime. Our brushless low RPM motors are large, and our large props work seamlessly for the life of the airframe. Our motors don't need to be to work so hard, which translates in longevity. Our stable flight for precise results. Our micro, our uh, micro controlled drive system instantly responds to changing winds to maintain proper flight at altitude. For mapping and stable flights, delivers more accurate and precise data. Robust housing and components. As carbon fiber construction makes it easy to work on uh, work easy work of an occasional rough landing. Carbon fiber is also insulates the interior components so you can fly at a more extreme temperatures and humidity levels. We also, if you, I don't if you notice, uh, we have the orange band in the front here. That's the front, uh, which is different than I would say most of the quadcopters out there because most of them fly in an X pattern, X formation. Ours flies in a, a plus sign for configuration, which is more practical. With a motor in, on the front and the rear and on one on each side, the airframe remains uh, more stable in level flight and during turns. With less energy being consumed for stability, the extra power goes to carrying heavier, heavier payloads for longer periods of time. Our Micro Jones has created a lean proprietary operating system that is used as the foundation for our flexible autopilot. So you can customize it and meet the specific needs of your mapping projects. MD Cockpit tablet version allows you to plan, monitor, and analyze your mission, your mapping missions. It contains all the tools you need to quickly set your flight plan and waypoints with a few flicks of the finger. And also something that uh, folks don't, might not realize is tested for high voltage fields. Those who intend to fly their Micro Jones UAV near uh, power lines can do so with confidence, knowing our quadcopters are rigorously tested for interference up to 380 uh, kilovolts in a high voltage laboratory at the Technical University in Dresden, uh, Germany. So I'll start with the smallest of our three airframes. This is the MD-4-200. Diameter is uh, 21 inches. It weighs 2.4 pounds and has a payload capacity of just over half a pound. Construction, uh, as all of our airframes, are carbon fiber uh, with a high-end automotive paint over the top. That's the white area. It has a cruising speed of just under 18 miles per hour and has an endurance of 15 to 25 minutes. So it's the smallest offering. It has uh, it has its uses. It you know it has its uh, positives and in, in, uh, the drawbacks. But uh, this is a quite a, a nice package to be able to de deploy uh, easily and quickly. Uh, many of uh, law enforcement around the country uh, can put these in their trunk and they use them to map uh, automobile accidents. So with the, uh, oh, here we go. Next, the next one up is the MD4-1000. This is the workhorse that, of our fleet. This is the, the most popular one we have and this is uh, the one that has the most payloads. Uh, it has a diameter of 40 and a half inches. It weighs 13 pounds and has a payload capacity of uh, just under three pounds. Uh, cruising speed, uh, approximately 27 miles per hour, and has industry-leading endurance of up to 45 minutes. And last but not least, this is the monster of our fleet. It's the MD4-3000. We just introduced this uh, drone in uh, January of 2017. It's, uh, it's not uh, square, it's 78 inches long and 71 inches wide. It weighs 33 pounds and has a payload capacity of 11 pounds and has a cruising speed of 36 miles per hour and still maintains a 45-minute industry-leading uh, endurance. So those are the three, uh, the three airframes. Now let's give these uh, drones some meaningful employment because without a payload, they're not earning any money. And the first up would be the uh, MD4-200. It's called the MD Mapper 200. So we have like a consistent naming convention that, that uh, you'll see as I go through the presentation. Uh, it's lightweight, easy to transport. It can stand up to a tough, rough weather and daily use. 
and you can map up to 74 acres on one battery charge. So what comes with the uh, MD Mapper 200? A lightweight Sony camera, 20.1 megapixel mounted to a carbon fiber nader mount. Uh, comes with our MD Waypoint software for flight planning. Digital data data link connecting your devices to the UAV, so you can see what the see what the UAV is doing throughout the whole mission. Uh, MDRC controls the UAV and the payload, gives you the vital telemetry data as well, so you have redundancy there. So not only are you getting uh, telemetry data on the RC, you also get telemetry data on your uh, tablet. Uh, and then also on the tablets, the MD cockpit software, which allows you to monitor the flight in real time. You also use that as for planning purposes. So the next uh, offering in our in our in our product offering is the MD Mapper 1000. Again, this is using the MD4 1000 uh, airframe, which has the 35 to 45 minute uh, flight times. Has obviously has impressive stability, resistant to the rough winds, the harsh weather, hot temperatures, high voltage, strong magnetic. Uh, magnetic fields, mapping up to 148 acres on a single battery charge. And what's included in this package? There's commonality across all the all the different packages and um, and uh, airframes. We're using the same software. We're using the same controller. We're using you know the same tablet for mission planning. But for what? So I'll identify what's different in this package. In this package, it comes with the Sony A6300, which is a 24 megapixel camera. And uh, also with this package, it comes with um, this airframe, the MD4-1000, has a, what they call MD landing assist. So basically, um, you still have to have your hands on the control, but you're not actually landing it. So you're saying you're just you're holding a shift button down saying, please land. It's something you do about 15, 20 feet in the air, your final approach. It works great. I got customers that use it exclusively. Okay, the next offering is uh, the same airframe. It's called the MD Mapper 1000 DG. DG stands for direct georeferencing. This is huge groundbreaking and has really started to take off in 2017. We introduced it last year early in the year, um, but uh, this year it's really starting to take off. And it, what, what it does is that it, it, it provides a bunch of value to you. One, you don't need ground control points. You literally can fly the mapping mission with no ground control points and get survey grade results. On top of that, you can reduce your side and front lap. By doing that, you, one, reduce the, the um, flight time, reducing your flight profile. You're also collecting less images. By collecting less images, that's less time in, in, uh, in post-processing. So this is, this is, what's in, this is kind of uh, the, the MD Mapper 1000 DG overview. You know, it's got the same, character, uh, same, same attributes as the, the other the, the mapper. You know, it's the same airframe, same speed. But it comes with the Sony RX1, R2 with a gimbal mount. Uh, with a Nader mode, I'm sorry. The Sony RX1 R2 is a 42 megapixel camera. Um, and then on the back of that camera, we have mounted an Aplonix APX15 board. And then that board has a survey grade GNSS receiver and a precisely calibrated IMU. So no ground control points, less side lap, more productivity. And as you can see, you're getting more uh, mapping per battery charge, 198 acres. And it's very popular for corridor mapping, for those of you that get into uh, uh, mapping roads, construction, uh, railroads, uh, right-of-ways, pipelines. This really helps out a lot, not having to, uh, not have to put the ground control points in place. So just to talk about what makes this package different, what actually comes with it. Uh, as you can see, there's the uh, full-frame commercial off-the-shelf camera. Again, 42 megapixel, 35 millimeter lens, calibrated in Montreal before it leaves the leaves the shop to the customer. It comes with the uh, lightweight uh, GNS antenna, which is exclusively just for the payload. That is not for the uh, the UAV's flight. So the UAV actually has its own uh, own G, uh, GPS system. And then it also comes with the Aplonix uh, APX15 chipset, which is a 220 channel GNS Trimble receiver. So those of you who are familiar with Trimble, this is a this is a Trimble product. So what, you know, one of the things uh, folks are going to ask is what is what is uh, direct geo referencing. So kind of uh, a little overview here, but the main key point is um, it's a uh, every time that camera takes a picture, it's wired to the APX15 board and tells the board, hey, I just took a picture. 
APX 15 will record that you know date stamp, the time that exact time it took the picture, but also more importantly, it's getting uh, all six exterior orientations, X, Y, Z, you know, tilt, uh, pitch, and, and yaw for every image taken. So you don't need aerial triangle uh, triangulation techniques. And a lot of the stuff I kind of mentioned before, you know, no G GCPs are required. Uh, the, the imagery that you're getting with this is, is fantastic. It also, not, not only do you have less images to process, but the processing time uh, is cut just by the, the quality of the flight and the imagery. Uh, stitching a, a ortho mosaic together is a little, is much faster than than a, with a, a like a fixed wing example. So this kind of gives you a, a visual overview of our two systems side by side that the 1000 offers. This is the 1000, the Mapper 1000, and to the right is the the Mapper 1000 DG. And you can see the flight profile on here. And you, so obviously you're cutting down on time uh, that the the drone is in the air, but not only that, you're also cutting down on how many images you're going to have to take. And so a little, little bit of a comparison here, kind of similar theme from the, the previous slide. On the far left, we'll start from the left, move to the right, aerial triangulization, which is what our uh, our Mapper 1000 would use. You can actually do this mission in 8060, um, uh, side and, end, and, and front lap. Uh, but you guys, you can see with the white triangles, there's GCPs that are being required. And uh, in order for this for this example here, it looks like you're doing some volumetrics calculations. So you're going to need GCPs in place. Uh, commonly asked question is, uh, do you have RTK? No, we don't use RTK. And one of the reasons why is it's got the same flight uh, profile, same amount of images, a few less ground control points, but you still it's it's just a half step better. If you look at our uh, direct geo referencing package. You see the flight uh, profile is much shorter, much much more efficient. I'll say, you can go 60-40 uh, on and end and side lap, no ground control points. We like to put one in as a as a checkpoint, and uh, it's, so it's a much faster, much uh, the more efficient uh, process. And I'll actually, I think this next slide here, yes, we'll kind of put that in, in numbers. Now these are small numbers. This is just a, a small project, but if you start. Uh, Multiplying this out over you know months or over the year, you'll see it's a huge saving. So, so uh, the first big savings is GCP layouts for this project. It was about two hours. So you already saved two hours of time right there. The flight. This is actually a pretty big time saver as well. Granted, it's 35 minutes to fly the Mapper 1000 and only 15 minutes to cover the same amount of the same project with the DG but you're saving 20 minutes. So if you look at that in the percentage, it's more than 50% savings right there alone. And this is where the big bang is to your, for your buck is data processing. Uh, 12 hours it took to process this, this mission here, uh, probably because there's quite a few uh, images, right? And it take up a lot of space. It only took us four hours to process the DG. So you saved eight hours there, again, more than half. So if you look at the total time spent in this, this project, it was 50, 50 hours and 35 minutes for the mapper and only 5 hours and 15 minutes for the DG. So a, more than a 50% savings. Astronomical. And at the same time, you're still getting survey grade results. So I wanted to just share a, a success story from the field from earlier this year in 2017. We were in Chile, South America working with one of our, our bigger customers at an open mine. And uh, the, the key thing I wanted to bring up with this, this example was it was uh, an afterthought. We didn't, we didn't plan this mission. We were there for a couple of weeks doing stuff with them. And they said, hey, could you, do, could you map this road that runs along the side of the mine? And we said, okay. So uh, just keep that in mind. There was, there was very little planning that was done. It was done on site. It was a five kilometer road. We were flying at 2,500 meters. Uh, above sea level, which is very high, above the, the tree line, we had to actually use special special props at that height. So I do have customers in like Colorado that want to fly at uh, higher heights. We uh, we actually use a three-bladed prop on the 1000 for that because the air is so thin. The mission was side lap 60 and lap 80 percent. The flying height is 120 meters. And with, with that camera, at that height, you're getting a GSD of 1.7 centimeters. Uh, flight speed is 6 meters per second, which is, I think, 12 miles per hour or something like that. Two strips, meaning down and back. Uh, so it was a 
an equivalent of 187 acres, and there were six GCPs that were provided by the, the customer as used as checkpoints. So this is just uh, an example of the imagery that was that was captured from it. So if you look left to right, here's a, a whole picture of the of a section of the road. I don't know if that's the whole five kilometers, but you can see uh, you know what it looks like. And as we zoom in on this area here at the bottom, we can see there's a pipe here. So we zoom in a little bit farther, and this just gives you an idea of the quality of the imagery. You can clearly see that this is a pipe. I believe it was um, around around two feet in diameter. So what are you doing with this data besides looking at it? There's uh, ways they can uh, look at the, oh, here's, here's a couple more pictures of, the, of uh, the imagery that came from it. But I also have a surface model I want to show you on the next slide. So here's a profile of that road. You can see the, the line here is, is the profile, and here's the, uh, here's the elevation profile. You can see that the road drops off to the left, a little mound here, and then it's flat. That's the road. And then you can see right here is the pipe, which is indicated right here. And I think what I have here for the next slide is just a, a, a more blown up version of that. So it kind of shows it even clearer. The bankman on the side of the road, here's the road again, and here's the pipe. So what's included in the package? Well, this package is very much like all the other ones. There's lots of commonalities across it. That's the theme that we have. So I'm going to point out what's different. It comes with a Sony RX1 R2 camera. Of course, on the back of that camera is mounted the, uh, the Plonix APX15 IMU. Also, uh, a Plonix PosPack software to generate the EO file. That's about a 15-minute process you have to do at the end of the mission. And then it comes with the, the, with the uh, IMU, comes with a, a GNS antenna that's mounted on the top of the drone. Other than that, everything else is the same as the mapping package. you got the landing assist, waypoint mode carrying case, you know, soft MD cockpit software, uh, and the MDRC digital data link, all, all common across the board. So the next one in our in our offering is the uh, MD Mapper 3000 DG. So this is the, uh, the uh, airframe we re, um, released in January. And uh, it does, you know, the heavy lifting. It carries up to 11 pounds and can have the flight time of 45 minutes. And as I uh, mentioned, it's, it's been newly released. It, um, the the, the uh, mapping package will be available sometime this summer. Um, actually, we believe we sold one already, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not out yet. But if anyone's interested, it comes, it comes with either two, two different payloads. One is the Phase 1, which is a medium format camera um, with a Aplonix uh, IMU attached to it. So you got the direct geo-referencing. That's a 100 megapixel camera, so it's it's for specific uses. Matter of fact, one of the things we're really interested in using in it is with some of these large open mines, because when you're flying at 120 meters to map the floor of the mine, you're you're losing a lot of your GPS signal because of the walls of the mine. So one of the things we would like to do is be able to fly at a level where we're above the mine, which would require a bigger camera, bigger and better camera. So it's not so much that we're trying; it's it's given us the ability to fly. Uh, at a height where we can get more GPS signals uh, and still be able to get the same quality. It's not, uh, I, it's not something I recommend for your average mapping missions. Also, it's going to have uh, the, the Regal VUX-1 uh, LiDAR, also with an Aplonix IMU on it. I'll talk about that in a second. So uh, another thing that I think is very powerful with the Micro Jones lineup is, is the fact that we, you know, we're not, not just building sensors built into the frame and, and uh, changing our designs and every year. And so you have to buy, make another investment. You buy an MD4-1000, or if you buy the mapping package, which is an MD4-1000, a, it's a tool in your toolbox that you can continue to, uh, to expand on, right? It's, it's, uh, you know, it's almost like having you know, cordless tools you buy. You can, if you have the batteries for it, you can buy different kinds of tools that are compatible with that battery. Same with this. Uh, we have lots of different accessories, different payloads for for the MD4-1000, well, for all of ours. But they, like I mentioned before, the 1000 has probably the most payload options. Uh, this is the Plus M. And the Plus M stands for multispectral. This package here is a, five, is a Micasense Red Edge camera uh, sensor that has a five-band uh, multispectral, red, green, blue, near-infrared, and infrared. It's very popular for uh, our Precision Ag co uh, customers. 
and it can fit underneath the MD4-200 or the MD4-1000. Actually, you could put it under the MD4-3000 as well. So it is, this actually, this payload will fit under all three of our airframes. Uh, next in line is uh, Plus T. And Plus T actually can fit all underneath all three airframes as well. It's, it's a thermal solution. There's a, there's a lot of different uses for a thermal solution. It's, it's uh, not just specifically for mapping, but we do map with them. Uh, and also it's very popular with structural inspection, especially with uh, power lines. We have companies that monitor power lines with UABs and uh, apparently they, they use the plus T to um, find hot spots on the lines and conductors and things like that will show up. Next is our probably the most popular uh, payload option, and that's the plus I. Uh, what comes with the plus I is a, a two-axis brushless gimbal, a seven-inch monitor and tripod um, that allow, and, and actually the digital HD digital downlink. So this will give you the ability to fly a structure and be able to see real time what you're looking at. You can fly and taking video. This typically what we do is we take video and if we see something of interest, you switch out of video mode and, and you actually take a high res picture. The pictures are phenomenal. So if you're sitting at, you know, you're sitting at 15 meters away from a structure and you zoom in and take a picture, you can like read the numbers on a bolt. You can see the threads on it, see how rust, you know, if there's rust on that bolt or if there's a crack in that uh, wind turbine blade, you can see all of it. It's, it's amazing. So uh, this is a thing I like to share with folks. There's a lot of uh, discussion out there, a lot of energy, uh, positive energy around LiDAR, and Micro Drones wants to be a leader in that world. We're providing LiDAR for both the 1,000 and the 3,000 airframe. Starting uh, in June of this year, we're taking orders already, and uh, it will be uh, publicly released in mid-June uh, for the MD4-1000 plus LiDAR. It's going to be... Uh, a SICK LiDAR, the company is called SICK, and we're going to attach an APX-15 board to the back of it to uh, geo-reference it. Also, later this year, probably in the fall, you'll see uh, a payload for the MD4-3000. Uh, it's a very industry-leading LiDAR for, by Regal. It's the VUX-1, and it will also have uh, a Plonix uh, IMU attached to it. Another product that we've already released, but we're, we're in a process, we're in a design freeze and actually releasing a, a new version of it in uh, another month or two is the methane gas detector. Uh, very popular for monitoring uh, uh, both above and underground uh, gas lines. And I have customers uh, across the country using it. And again, I talked about this before, the medium format phase one camera, which the 100 megapixel camera that we're going to be putting underneath the uh, MD4-3000. This slide here is the specs. If anyone's interested uh, in learning more about the uh, MD Mapper Plus LiDAR, uh, contact Chad or Angie, and uh, they can give you the full sa um, sales literature. Uh, this is just part of it, the specs. So you can kind of get some detail about behind this, uh, this product as we release it in, in June. All right. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, so we've got just one more poll question here. I'll let you go ahead with that, Angie. All right. Um, so the next full question, what type of sensor payload would you likely use? And we touched on most of these, uh, standard RBG, RGB, multispectral infrared thermal, LIDAR, or methane gas detection? All right, the results, um, just as I suspected, standard RGB and and LiDAR, you know, LiDAR is becoming quite more common on this type of technology, so it's exciting to see that there's interest in that. So, all right, I'll turn it back over to you, John. So now we're going to roll into the portion of photogrammetry software uh, that we mentioned earlier in the agenda. Uh, this portion is going to give a, a broad but detailed overview of the 
process of utilizing the aircraft, the data that's collected uh, into a, a more photogrammetric application. In other words, something that you can actually uh, take into uh, an existing workflow or, or project, be it an ortho mosaic, a point cloud, or what have you. So to start, uh, we've had some recent changes uh, with the photogrammetry software uh, that we're, we're offering. Um, the Trimble Business Center and Aerial Photogrammetry module used to be almost uh, really a completely separate thing from UAS Master. Uh, but now as of version 3.80 of Trimble Business Center, Aerial Photogrammetry module, UAS Master is included. Uh, UAS Master is an info product. Info is a, 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 another Trimble company. Uh, the TBC Aerial Photogrammetry module with UAS Master software supports multiple survey and mapping applications and produces the highest value deliverables. Overall, that's its main objective. Uh, the most common photogrammetry applications that, that we see First and foremost, of course, are, are topographic surveys, uh, always the, the mapping and GIS applications, uh, asset management surveying, route planning, or, or what I like to more affectionately call corridor mapping, uh, being able to fly a long linear flight path of an area uh, to be collected is really a, a, a perfect use for an unmanned aircraft. Um, then, of course, volumetric surveys that Chuck actually mentioned earlier, earlier being able to, to fly above either a stockpile or even a quarry type situation uh, and being able to calculate that volume using the software uh, is, again, another keen reason to utilize an unmanned aircraft. Uh, land use planning, also, again, a great benefit, being able to fly over a given area uh, identify the use, uh, be it for agriculture, be it for development, industrial, residential, what have you, future planning of that, of that land use for that purpose. Uh, and then environmental assessments have also been something we've seen uh, great success with, uh, especially being out in a rural area that maybe hasn't received a lot of attention. Uh, again, being able to fly over that area and come away with a a very more, much more precise analysis or assessment of what's going on in that environment. And then, of course, kind of a really cool one that's just an inherent part of using an unmanned aircraft and a flight mission is, is monitoring, or, or perhaps better described as progress monitoring. Um, you've got an area, say, under development or construction. You plan a flight mission to go out and, and capture that data. Uh, well, you can go back. I say periodically or even on a planned schedule, fly that same flight mission again and monitor that progress as it go along to, to, you know, to better come away with uh, results. So the benefits that we've really received from where we are now with uh, the Trimble Business Center Aerial Photogrammetry module and now its inclusion or combination with UAS Master uh, again, first and foremost is the ability now to process data really from any type of UAS. Uh, included in that are really the most advanced photogrammetric tools and editing capabilities. Uh, we had some of that before in Trimble Business Center, but UAS Master really takes it to that next ultimate level. Uh, the integration with other data in Trimble Business Center, again, is a, is a huge plus. So the work that you may already be doing, uh, any type of surveying or planning, analysis, what have you that's going on in your Trim Trimble Business Center software, this of course can fit right into that and, and be used in that existing workflow. And then ultimately, much more faster processing and deliverable creation. Again, the, the really the programming and the tools built into UAS Master are, are really next to none and, and much more superior to uh, to aerial photogrammetry alone. So the workflow, uh, just to give you a, a real kind of overview, a broad overview of this, uh, is, is just this simple. So you're going to utilize one of those aircraft that Chuck was talking about earlier to collect that data in the field, to, to fly and, and capture that data, uh, be it standard imagery, uh, be it thermal imagery, what have you. That's then brought back to the office and you open Trimble Business Center and you basically set up a project, which is really just a matter of giving it a name and saving it. Uh, from there, 
uh, you would process trajectories depending on the type of aircraft that you're using. Not all are going to, to utilize that method. Uh, but fourthly, you're going to click a button inside Trimble Business Center that says Send to UAS Master. It's literally just that simple. That's going to open that UAS Master program from where you'll then just simply set up the sensor. In other words, what type of, of camera or sensor is being used to capture that data. And you'll perform any adjustments. Uh, if you're utilizing ground control, uh, you'll perform those tie downs to that ground control. Then you're going to generate those deliverables. Uh, again, be it an ortho mosaic, uh, the point cloud, a combination of the both. And then you're going to take that data back to Trimble Business Center. Uh, there's a, another option uh, basically on a drop down there to send to TBC. So it's going to take those deliverables that you've created and bring those back into your Trimble Business Center environment to do all of that other work that we mentioned earlier. So we've got some screenshots here to kind of show this process. Uh, I think this is better than actually trying to run through the demonstration. One, you guys aren't having to wait. And two, uh, it's going to look uh, you know, a lot more smoother uh, with the flow here. So again, it begins in Trimble Business Center. Uh, this is basically clicking on Start a New Project. Uh, you're going to choose the, the type of template there, really the units that's going to be used. Uh, if you have ground control, the next thing you're going to do is import that ground control. Uh, typically, that would be just a CSV file of some points, their position and elevation. Um, this is, uh, again, an automated process just like you see here on the screen. Uh, this was a very large project, uh, this example here. So as you see now, there's a, a great many number of ground control points selected on the screen. Uh, from this point, you can literally go up and hit that Send to UAS Master button. There's, there's not anything else to do at this point in Trimble Business Center. Uh, we see that the ground control points are selected over there. Uh, and then finally, the last thing you'll do on this screen is, is click OK. Uh, that's going to open up the UAS Master application. Um, and then from there, you're now inside UAS Master. This is essentially the, the home screen or the main screen inside the UAS Master software. Uh, we've brought over those project parameters from TBC. So now all we have to do is go up and begin our project preparation. By clicking on Edit, it's going to open that, the UAS Project Editor. And as I mentioned before, your only choices here or to do what I mentioned, to, to set up and, and prepare the camera and sensor, uh, to bring in the, the photos, and then the GNSS data that was captured along with uh, the, the flight as, as you flew. Uh, from there, you end up with kind of this raw look of what the data looks like. Here you see the individual tiles of images that were captured. Uh, you see the flight line or flight path that the aircraft took. And then you see all of that ground control that was captured along the way. Uh, from this point, you go into the, to the basically performing or measuring the ground control points. Uh, a question was asked earlier, you know, how does ground control really come into play? What is it used for? I think the best way to explain it is, is you're just simply providing a point of reference on the ground that's captured in the imagery. And then you're more or less verifying or uh, lining up that point on the screen with that ground control point that you've measured on the ground. Again, this was a very, very large project. So uh, typically, like the examples that you saw previously uh, in one of Chuck's slides, we're only talking about a handful of ground control on, on most projects. This was probably one of the largest I've ever seen here, but uh, it's as simple as the software is going to identify the positions from that ground control file and it's going to line those up with the positions in these images. So it kind of does it four at a time here. Uh, as you go through and click on that ground control, those, those green dots up at the top left uh, will basically change colors uh, and turn green as you go along the way, identifying that you've made uh, basically good choices or you've clicked on the target um, accurately. Uh, after that's done, the next thing to do is, is click on, you know, basically surface and ortho generation. 
uh, you're going to start a UAS edit. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, this is, this is really where most of the power of UAS Master comes into play. Uh, after you click on Start a UAS Edit, it's going to open this new screen here called the Point Cloud Manager. This is where all of those really extremely powerful tools of UAS Master is actually found. Uh, the ability to go into this point cloud and, and edit out, uh, say, any obstructions. Uh, if you're trying to capture the true surface of, a, of an area for development, being able to rotate this, this point cloud three-dimensionally and, and literally delete out uh, vegetation or ground clutter or something like that all with the, the purpose or the mindset of, of coming away with really the most accurate representation of what's actually there on the ground. Uh, so you'll make some choices here on the type of point cloud that you're wanting to create or, or really export out of the software. Uh, you've got choices on the digital terrain model, digital surface model extraction. Uh, you make those choices. Uh, you also do basically the same thing on your ortho mosaic. You can enter in and choose the pixel size. Uh, there's options on ortho mosaicing uh, and the ortho from the point cloud. In other words, you know, what do you want to be tied together or, or how, should, how should that be uh, relative to the point cloud that you just edited? Again, make those choices uh, and then essentially it's, it's going to start a process that's going to really run in the background uh, depending on the, the, the size of the data or the data file that you've captured will determine how long it's going to take. But as I mentioned, UAS Master has probably one of the, if not the fastest processing uh, softwares out there to, to create that point cloud and create that ortho mosaic. So it'll do its thing. It's whiz-bang magic, as I like to call. And then once it's completed, you'll get a notification down there on the screen and then you can go up there really to the top left drop down, click on project, and now send to TBC. We're not really going to use the ortho mosaic or the point cloud in UAS Master. That's just where it's being created. Um, you can also take it out, of course, to other software geospatial platforms that are out there. It doesn't necessarily have to go back to Trimble Business Center. Uh, when you click on that uh, export option, essentially, you then get some more options here on, on exactly what you're wanting to take out. Uh, you can choose just the point cloud, just the ortho, or all of them like you see here, as well as bringing the ground control points back. You don't necessarily have to do that because they've technically already been used, but you have the option to do it. Uh, click on Next and Finish, and now we're back in the Trimble Business Center software. So now we're seeing kind of a straight down two dimensional view now of an ortho mosaic that was created from all of those individual images. We still see that flight line and those ground control points on the ground. Here's probably a better look of it in the three dimensional view inside Trimble Business Center. Uh, this is showing you that point cloud with that ortho mosaic uh, kind of underlaid or inlaid with it as you will. So you're seeing the natural color and the three-dimensional points that have been captured. Uh, you can utilize this view or, or from this perspective to take any measurements there like you see on the side of those buildings, uh, the ground measurements of course, or, or whatever, whatever your objective may be. Uh, this is probably the best, better looking view. Now we're zoomed out even more, still in 3D, but uh, you're seeing the real quality there shown of that ortho mosaic that's been produced. So now we've got just one more poll question uh, really about uh, the, the types of deliverables that would be most interested to you. Angie? All right. So Chad just touched on, you know, deliverables and workflows. So what we would like to know is which deliverable is most beneficial to you and your organization? All right, we have the results of the poll, which really ties into the last poll question about, you know, which sort of sensors would be mounted. So coming up, you know, the ortho mosaic with the RGB cameras and uh, surface models, so that fits in with the LiDAR. Great to hear. Now I'll turn it back over to you, Chad, to, to wrap it up for us. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Angie, and thank you, everybody, for your participation there. So for more information about Trimble Business Center that we were talking about, uh, we encourage you to visit trimble.com slash tbcsurvey. 
there's also an equal amount of information about UAS Master. That page is a little bit longer, trimble.com slash geospatial slash info dash UAS Master. And then finally, if you're like me and just want to watch a video about the product, uh, please visit the Trimble YouTube page uh, at Trimble Survey News where you'll find a plethora of videos about all the available Trimble products. So to that point, Microdrones is not exclusively used with Trimble Business Center and UAS Master. There are other options out there. Uh, we're aware of that. The Microdrone solutions can be used with those other types of photogrammetry solutions, uh, including PIX4D and Agisoft. Uh, to that point, we do see that most of, uh, I guess, the more advanced capability around really what our specialty is, uh, surveying, mapping, the, those advanced types of solutions. We find most of those tools and that capability with our TBC and UAS Master, specifically the ultimate photogrammetrist grade imaging processing thanks to UAS Master software. So to wrap up, the core applications that we've seen across the board, really this has just been over the past few years, uh, the clients that we've worked with the most, where we've seen the most success, uh, as well as the, the, I guess, the reoccurring business, really falls into one of these categories that you see here. Uh, ironically, engineering and surveying tends to be doing most of these other things in a more type of contract type situation. Uh, but to that, mining, civil and heavy earthworks, construction, uh, oil and gas, environmental and landfill, uh, even public agencies. We've done some work with both state and local municipalities. Uh, as well as agriculture and forestry. All right, so that's going to conclude the presentation for today. Uh, again, if you have questions, uh, look there at the bottom of your GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, you can type those questions in now and submit, and, and we'll do our best to answer those for you. All right, Chad, um, you have some questions that did come in. Um, you touched on ground control, but, you know, there are some users, or some folks, you know, that are in the webinar today that are aren't 100% familiar with this technology. Could you touch on, um, either you or Chuck touch on the benefit of side lab? Okay, so uh, with ground control, I guess basically I, I did skip over how that would be established. So really it's as simple as this. Uh, say if you've got an open area of field of some sort and there's really no objects out there to use as a reference, you would just take out some sort of target that could be uh, easily identified from the air. In other words, you'll go out, set that target out before you fly, and use some sort of a high accuracy GPS to record that target's position. Uh, again, depending on the size of the project would determine how much ground control needs to be used, but it's typically relative to the size. Uh, you'll just take those ground control points, put that into basically a CSV format of of X, Y, and Z along with a, a point ID and that's what's brought into the software. Uh, as for the side lap or overlap as it's commonly called, that's really just an inherent part of, of the photogrammetry solution. In other words, when you're capturing imagery from the air, if you didn't have a little bit of overlap from image to image, you would have gaps between the images. So using overlap is just a way to, to ensure that you're, you're capturing everything within that given defined target area. Okay, great. Thanks, Chad. Um, another question that came through, can the microdrone cameras collect oblique images? You know, for example, tower inspection, corridor mapping? I can field that one, Chad. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, that's uh, we have customers that use the brushless gimbal to uh, do oblique imagery. Uh, specifically, we've had a customer do a 3D image of uh, of a dam using the brushless gimbal. Great, thanks, Chuck. Uh, you know, we talk about different different options and different sorts of technology that could be mounted to these cameras, and I, I thought this was an interesting question. Has anyone, any clients, um, ever tried mounting a magnet magnetometer? Sorry, I'm gonna muff that word up, but has that ever been an option or something that's been done in the past? Uh, um, not to, not that I know of, but we have a magnetometer actually um, on the drone itself. Uh, it's on one of the uh, arms 
that helps with the navigation. But um, I'm sure I'm sure we've done it in Germany. I could what I could do is ask that question with my R and D group and and get back to that person. Yes, great. I'll pass you that information. Um, you know, another application-driven question, has anything been done with um, storm damage, specifically with utilities? You know, we're looking at electric, TV, cable, power lines, et cetera. Yeah, yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. Mayor Swift, we got a, uh, a brand new customer coming on board working with FEMA to do just that kind of stuff. But uh, we do all sorts of kind of uh, uh, disaster or post-disaster uh, evaluation, search and rescue. Uh, California's government has a, a project where they're using uh, our system, our mapping system, actually, to record all the earthen dams after uh, an earthquake um, to measure anything that's seen, if anything's moved. But the, the short answer to that question is absolutely uh, a lot of that stuff going on. Great. Thanks, Chuck. Um, you know, a few more questions coming in just about mounting practices. Um, uh, this is one for you, Chuck. Can video collected be converted to still images in post-processing? That question was, I'm sorry, that question was, what was that? The video? The video being collected, can it be converted to still images in the post-processing? I haven't seen that yet. It's an interesting question um, because you know, that's not the first time it's been asked. Um, the short answer is I haven't seen it yet, but I believe that something like that is coming, yes. Okay, great. Thanks, Chuck. We love, uh, we love custom stuff, so anything that's challenging that, uh, you know, that someone sees a market need for that we're not offering, we love to hear about it. Great. Thanks, Chuck. And then, you know, we did have quite a few questions on, on pricing. Um, you know, where can these folks go to, to kind of look at, is it, you know, on your website or contact us directly? Contact NEI directly. Um, uh, have them contact Chad for pricing and demos. Okay, great. Um, just going to look through a couple more of the questions here. Um, we did get, you know, we were asked if, if this would be available after the webinar. The answer is yes. We will be providing copies of this um, chat. I, I can't remember if it's going to be directly or posted on our YouTube, but we, this will be available to you, and we'll definitely let you all know how you can get a copy of this presentation. Um, let me see. We'll do one more question here. We're getting close on time. Um, we had one that came in regarding methane sensors. With, uh, Will they be able to be mounted on the two-axis mount? Well, uh, well, actually, I would say no because it would exceed the payload uh, capacity of the 1,000. It might be something you can do on the 3,000, but the the, meth the methane detection system, as of right now, uh, uses a laser, so it has like a 10-inch swath. So you you have to, and uh, there's also an FPV camera mounted there, so you can see where you're flying. But that could be tricky. But I, I guess the answer is we're not doing it right now. But uh, it's something we can obviously do fairly easy with the MD4 3000 airframe because it could handle the payload of a brushless gimbal and the laser sensor. But uh, it could not be done with the uh, MD4 1000 airframe. Okay. Uh, and then I just said that was the last question. But I have one more that I think we should touch on because this is a concern, you know, with the FAA. Uh, and, uh, Chad, maybe I'll, I'll throw this one to you. Um, what are the latest requirements for um, piloting license? Yep, so uh, finally, and as I like to joke about that, finally the FAA has actually made the, the piloting or licensing process fairly simple. Uh, the best place to go for information is actually just faa.gov slash UAS, and believe it or not, they have everything on there that you need to know uh, to get your what's called Part 107 Unmanned Aircraft Pilots License. Uh, essentially, it's just a, a process of you going to a, a local testing facility, and uh, those testing facilities are, are literally in every state, probably in ever, every major city where there's a, a regional airport anywhere close by. Uh, they're the same facilities that actual manned aircraft pilots use to go and and do their training, education, and testing, but uh, you'll just go in, 
schedule a time and you sit down basically at a PC and you take a 60 question test uh, on the Part 107 rules and regulations. Um, the FAA has produced and released uh, essentially a study guide of the, of the content and information again that's out there on their website faa.gov slash UAS. Okay, great. Thanks, Chad. Um, there were some questions we couldn't get to, and just to let you know, um, one of us will be in touch directly to answer some of those questions. So I'll turn it over to you, Chad, to, to just wrap it up for us. Thank you. We'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Our presenter, Chuck Dorgan, with Microdrones, our moderator, Angie Swirsky, with NEI. And on behalf of myself and all of us in NEI, we hope you have a great day. <laughs>